the instant colors have arrived, at least for some backers, I'm one of the lucky among them. Um, in this video, I want to give you some first impression, impressions about the instant colors. Um, first, I want to try how they work with different primers. And next, I want to take a look at at least some of those colors. Um, let's first talk about the primers. So, of course, I used the Instant Colors Primer, in this case the Holy Charm Primer, to prime some miniatures. Next, I used the Vallejo Surface Primer White. And finally, I used, and this is more of a test, of, I used some underpainting before applying the Instant Colors. So, by underpainting, meaning that um, I primed the model in a way that uh, shows the ref the, um, the contrast uh, that light naturally generates. So to give you an example of an underpainted model, it looks like that. So you see that uh, it, it seems like light coming from above. Um, uh, for underpainting, I use Steinares black, painted it in an angle where the primer uh, came from uh, uh, from below the miniature. Uh, by the way, I used an airbrush for all the priming. Then I used Steinares gray. Here, it's, here the I the angle where the color hit the model was like that. And finally. I used again the Vallejo surface primer to prime the model from the top. And after that I used Vallejo that white in order to uh, um, dry brush the model, the miniature um, with this color. And this generated uh, something similar to how this model looks. Okay. Uh, how did it work? First, I have to say I really like the consistency of the um, uh, Holy Charm primer by Instant Colors. Uh, this primer was very smooth. It clogged my airbrush, uh, not like the Vallejo primer. It was, considering this aspect, um, it was on the same level as the high quality Steiner S primers. Um, but did it work with instant, did the Vallejo primer work with the instant colors? So maybe you have read some comments that um, the instant colors form some beads on the surface of the primer and don't really stick to it. Uh, so let's have a look on the outcome that I faced. This is one model I painted and this is another one. One of them is primed with the um, Instant Colors Primer, the other one with the Vallejo Primer. And as you can see, there is no real difference. Um, the primers work perfectly well, um, for, uh, both primers work perfectly well for the Instant Colors. So, to, uh, um, to reveal which model is primed by which primer, this one was primed by the Instant Colors Primer, the right one was primed by the Vallejo Primer, and there's no real relevant difference. Uh, so, so much about primers, now let's talk about colors. Um, first I want to talk about Savage Beige. This is the color I used for painting the horns. And as you can see, it gives a light tint to it. That's not really a consistent color that goes nice into the crevices and has a lot of contrast. Um, I didn't really like the outcome here. 
Um, I then tried to use multiple codes of this, and this you can see here with the left horn. It's a, it's a bit better, but the contrast is still not that great. But I think you can't expect more of a yellow color, and you should try to get contrast in a different way. Maybe this color is for a different purpose. So I also tried it on a, on a surface with a different texture. You can see it here on the back. And again, not uh, an outcome. I would make dances when I see it. Okay, so um, that's the first color I wanted to mention. Let's talk now about the second I'm not that happy with. That is Shadow Black. Um, and I used it for the bases. And as you can see, this is not a consistent way to paint a base. And, well, I said I'm not really happy with this color. That is not true. Um, I I thought in, adva in advance that it, it won't work on f on s on uh, flat surfaces, and I think this is not what these colors are made for. Um, and the same is I would say is true of the Savage Beige. You s don't simply use it as a single color uh, on a surface, but how can you use it? And to talk about this, let's. I've used the sulfur yellow. Um, it's a little bit darker than the than the other one. A um, little bit more saturated. And as you can see, of course we have green on the skull, but on the highest, uh, on the brightest parts, I use a bit of the sulfur yellow to give it a shift in, in you to give it a bit of variation. I think that's nice. I really like that and I think that's a better way to use the yellows here. Okay, so and then let's discuss the next color and that's already the green one. It was toad green. Um, and I really love the outcome. That is what I hoped it would be, and it's so nice how it looks. It has very strong contrast. It was so easy to apply the color. Uh, that was really great. Uh, same holds true for the sackweed orange. Ragweed orange, sorry. You can see it here. Also works nicely. And then let's discuss or introduce the Paralyzed Blue. We, have, we saw it already here. And again, I really like the outcome. Very easy to apply. You don't need to be a master painter. I'm for sure not one but it worked quite well here. Uh, and the same is true for Live Red, that is this one. Okay, so much about the car. Ah, let's talk a little bit about the Wild Beast or show the Wild Beast. That's the right horn. It looks a bit like a black, but that is only because of the poor lightning conditions here. Uh, yes, now you can see it a bit better that it has a brown, a strong brown hue. I really like that. That was a great and uh, easy way to get a nice color uh, on the miniature, although you can't really see it. It's vibrancy. Well, it's not a very vibrant color, but uh, it's color you, you can't really see it here. 
Um, okay, so last part is how did those color work with underpainting and I have to say I really loved it for some colors. So here is it with the Yanda painting and again let's have a comparison. As you can see it gets a bit darker and especially nice it is in the darker parts, the green. That is really great. And the yellow, for some reason the yellow was quite strong at the, um, at the brightest parts. I really love the outcome here. That looks fantastic. But on the horn it doesn't really look quite well. I gave it, you have to take the left, look first on the left horn, the yellow. That is close to not working at all. On the right horn I gave it multiple coatings and then it were a bit better. The ragweed orange loses a lot of saturation. But I can imagine uh, situations where I want to see that. But I really love what happened to the green. So underpainting works for some colors. And if it works, it's really great. And that's it. Those are my first impressions on the scale 75 colors. I hope it this video helps you to judge these colors a little bit better. Bye.